Hey there, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. And in this quick tutorial video, I'm gonna show you how to migrate your legacy global styles from Generate Blocks Pro version 1.6 and earlier to the new and more powerful global style system found in Pro version 1.7 and later. So you're probably familiar with the former global style system. If we come in here, you can see I have two examples set up. One would be a global style for my buttons. And if I edit this, you can see I've changed this just a little bit to have a slightly different padding. And then also I have some of my colors set up as well. Then I also have a global style for my containers. And this one is pretty simple. This one just acts as my main container. There's some padding on the top and bottom and the left and right. Now, of course, in a real site, you'd probably have many more styles attached to each of these global styles along with multiple different types of elements. So I wanna show you how easy it is to migrate from this legacy system into the new system. Let's go ahead and come back and I'm going to update my Generate Blocks Pro from version 1.6 to version 1.7. Now that I have Pro version 1.7 installed, when I come over to the Generate Blocks and Global Styles button, you can see that right away it's a little bit different. We haven't yet added any global styles with the new system, so those haven't appeared here, but we can see this option that says Legacy Global Styles. So if we click that, we kind of go back to the more familiar interface from before, and this gives us the opportunity to migrate these over. So what I'll do is go ahead and click on any one of my existing global styles here. We'll just start with the button. And when I go ahead and click on the button, you can see that we have the familiar interface that says global style name, label, and then we have this new option here. And this is the updated global style system. Now what we can do is attach as many global styles to one element as we want. Whereas in the past, of course, you'll recall you could only add one. This gives us tons of flexibility and there's a lot more to cover on that. So be sure to stay tuned to the channel because we have a lot of content on this new system that will really help you. So what I wanna do here is just give this global style a name. So this can be anything you want. And there's a lot of conversation around the conventions that you should follow to keep things consistent across your site, as well as you know client sites or any other site you manage. But my recommendation is come up with some sort of prefix that you can keep consistent. Like if your agency has the letters ABC as its acronym, you can do ABC hyphen, and then whatever you wanna call this. So you know container, or in this case button, of course makes more sense. So I'll go ahead and click on create, and now we're prompted on what to do with this new global style. Of course, keep in mind, we're in the legacy global styles panel right now. So we have this option that says copy the local block styles and that's exactly what we wanna do. So it's gonna copy the old legacy global styles into this new global style that we've just created. So we'll just click on start editing. And then if we go into the spacing panel, we can see that our top and bottom one RAM of padding and our left and right of 1.5 RAM are brought in, as well as if we go down to the background section, we can see that there is the background color here. Now, of course, this button has a hover color and the way that you get to those is a little bit different because the hover is actually a pseudo state of that global style. In the past, there was two different color selectors side by side, but if you wrote that CSS manually, you'd actually do it with a hover state. So what we wanna do is we can click on hover, go back down to that same backgrounds panel and you can see this other global color that comes from my generate press theme. That one is already selected. So it automatically migrated the standard state and the hover state of that button and its colors and all of its styling, which you can see is a massive time saver. So we can just go ahead and update this and save so that our new global style is created. And the exact same thing would apply if we wanna go back to our containers. We could click on this container and maybe our style here is gonna be ABC hyphen container. We can click on create. Once again, copy the local block styles and start editing. And now our spacing is going to pop in right here for rim top and bottom and left and right. So we can update and save this. And now when we go to a page like our homepage, for instance, we can go ahead and just pop in a container. And then in this case, we don't wanna use our legacy global style. Let's just go ahead and add our class here of ABC container. And then let's add our generate blocks button. And again, we're gonna use the style of ABC button now you'll notice it didn't change to match the previous styling, and that's because there's some default styles attached to the button. So we can clear those out by clicking this little X here and saying confirm. And now we can see that our ABC button global styling is showing up here on our homepage. Once again, I'll just go ahead and update this. And once we've confirmed that we have all of our styles migrated, I would recommend you go ahead and go back to generate blocks, global styles, view, and then we can just delete these. Now, when we go back to our homepage, our Interface on the right hand side will just be a little bit more clean. It's not gonna prompt us to use the legacy global style system. We're just gonna use this new one and the new global style that we've created. Check out our other videos here on the channel where we're covering global styles and all of the powerful things you can do with it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.